What's up, guys? We have a huge announcement from Trump about free speech and censorship, and it's going to have massive repercussions on social media platforms across the internet. It's going to have massive repercussions for people who have engaged in silencing American citizens online. Um, people are going to go to prison. So I'm going to break it down, but let's go ahead real quick, jump into the video, watch it, and then we'll come back. If we don't have free speech, then we just don't have a free country. It's as simple as that. If this most fundamental right is allowed to perish, then the rest of our rights and liberties will topple just like dominoes one by one. They'll go down. That's why today I'm announcing my plan to shatter the left wing censorship regime and to reclaim the right to free speech for all Americans. And reclaim is a very important word in this case because they've taken it away. In recent weeks, bombshell reports have confirmed that a sinister group of deep state bureaucrats, Silicon Valley tyrants, left wing activists and depraved corporate news media have been conspiring to manipulate and silence the American people. They have collaborated to suppress vital information on everything from elections to public health. The censorship cartel must be dismantled and destroyed, and it must happen immediately. And here's my plan. First, within hours of my inauguration, I will sign an executive order banning any federal department or agency from colluding with any organization, business, or person to censor, limit, categorize, or impede the lawful speech of American citizens. I will then ban federal money from being used to label domestic speech as mis- or disinformation. And I will begin the process of identifying and firing every federal bureaucrat who has engaged in domestic censorship, directly or indirectly, whether they are the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Health, Human Services, the FBI, the DOJ, no matter who they are. Second, I will order the Department of Justice to investigate all parties involved in the new online censorship regime, which is absolutely destructive and terrible, and to aggressively prosecute any and all crimes identified. These include possible violations of federal civil rights law, campaign finance laws, federal election law, securities law and antitrust laws, the Hatch Act, and a host of other potential criminal, civil, regulatory, and constitutional offenses. To assist in these efforts, I am urging House Republicans to immediately send preservation letters, and we have to do this right now, to the Biden administration, the Biden campaign, and every Silicon Valley tech giant ordering them not to destroy evidence of censorship. Third, upon my inauguration as president, I will ask Congress to send a bill to my desk, revising Section 230, to get big online platforms out of censorship business. From now on, digital platforms should only qualify for immunity protection under Section 230 if they meet high standards of neutrality transparency, fairness, and non-discrimination. We should require these... So, that right there, Section 230 protection, that's a huge deal. Uh, and there is almost no platform online right now that is uh, qualifying to have that immunity. Okay, Section 230 gives online platforms immunity to... Uh, being sued or having any kind of lawsuits due to the content that their users post on their platforms. So what happens is that if you go ahead and try to curate that content, if you get to, you know, if you shadow ban it, delete content or promote other content, you are effectively acting as a publisher, which means you are directly liable for the content that's on your platform. So all of these social media platforms, all of them, YouTube included, maybe mostly YouTube, <laughs> um, is in violation of Section 230. And, you know, they should be liable for 
a myriad of lawsuits, a myriad of lawsuits. So they're going to be in a hot mess. Let's just put it that way. There's, there's going to be an, a, a hot mess that they're going to be in. You know, that, that includes Facebook. There's people going to be going to prison over this. Uh, but there's more to it. I'm going to break it down more. Let's just go ahead and finish this out here. These platforms to increase their efforts to take down unlawful content such as child exploitation and promoting terrorism while dramatically curtailing their power to arbitrarily restrict lawful speech. Fourth, we need to break up the entire toxic censorship industry that has arisen under the false guise of tackling so-called myths and disinformation. The federal government should immediately stop funding all nonprofits and academic programs that support this authoritarian project. If any U.S. university is discovered to have engaged in censorship activities or election interferences in the past, such as flagging social media content for removal of blacklisting, those universities should lose federal research dollars and federal student loan support for a period of five years and maybe more. That's fair. We should also enact new laws laying out clear criminal penalties for federal bureaucrats who partner with private entities to do an end run around the Constitution and deprive Americans of their First, Fourth, and Fifth Amendment rights. In other words, deprive them of their vote. And once you lose those elections, and once you lose your borders like we have, you no longer have a country. Furthermore, to confront the problems of major platforms being infiltrated by legions of former deep staters and intelligence officials, there should be a seven-year calling off period before any employee of the FBI, CIA, NSA, DNI, DHS, or DOD is allowed to take a job at a company possessing vast quantities of U.S. user data. So, yeah, that right there, uh, as I understood it, Facebook actually had feds working in the building. Uh, YouTube has it. They all have like various different departments, uh, federal departments, intelligence agencies. And they have agents that work there that had, well, I guess I think they're retired agents, but they have like lines of communication. Let's just put it. And so they get hired by these companies and then begin to uh, access user data, manipulate what gets posted in order to create a narrative. I mean, there's just been massive collusion to restrict free speech, to restrict citizens' First Amendment rights in this country. And that should not be happening. That's illegal. And uh, people need to go to prison for that. And it looks like Trump is going to put people in prison for that. And good for him for doing that. So it looks like we're going to be embarking on a new new trajectory here. We're going into, I think, maybe one of the best times in American history, at least in my lifetime. If we can get back to constitutional rights, protections for the people... And the crazy thing here is that I think the this is these are things that the left wants too. They want to get rid of corruption, you know. That was before the left got hijacked and I guess brainwashed by this new left, this extreme radical left. Um, I think they also wanted the same thing before they were just brainwashed. So right now they may be crying about it. And we're going to have to drag them kicking and screaming, but they will be better off for it. Believe me, we all will. Um, we definitely need to get rid of corrupt government. And Trump is going to gut the system, man. Gut this corrupt system and start fresh. Start fresh and put some power back into our hands. As far as it comes to YouTube, I've personally been affected by their controls on free speech that they've had you know they uh, they have these keywords they use discriminatory language um disinformation hate speech you know anytime you have any accurate uh, criticism of anything that is 
on the left, if you're criticizing the left in any kind of way or their ideology or their agenda or narrative, immediately they want to strike your channel. And there's just been a campaign on conservative content creators. You can, you know, check out Steven Crowder's uh, channel that's been uh, banned multiple times. There's been Tim Pool. His videos have been taken down. The Quartering, um, Matt Walsh. It's just never ending. They've targeted uh, conservative content creators and taken down video after video. And you're just basically constantly posting content um, you know, with with the thought that there's like a guillotine dangling over your head that can fall at any moment if YouTube uh, doesn't like what you've just posted, okay? Now, am I saying YouTube doesn't have that right? No, no, it's a private company. They absolutely have a right to curate content if they wish to be a publisher, okay? Which will make them liable to lawsuits and so what they have been doing is flying under the radar of Section 230 protections, which allows these platforms to not be uh, liable for the content that's posted on their platform. However, the requirement for that protection is that you do not curate that content. You do not delete. You don't shadow ban. You don't promote other content. You cannot touch the content that the users post on that platform. If you do, you become a publisher. End of story, you become liable. So they are absolutely 100% in violation of Section 230. And Trump's coming for your heads, YouTube. And I'm, I, for one, am very, very happy about it. Uh, being negatively affected by this, um, I just feel like, you know what? They want to have their cake and eat it too, silence Americans. Um, act as a publisher and still have section 230 protections it doesn't work that way sorry um, so there's a reckoning coming for youtube a reckoning coming for facebook all of them all of them so what does this mean going forward for facebook well they have two options they can either choose to be a publisher which means they're going to have to curate their content to an insane insane degree and Let's not forget, there's like thousands of hours of content being uploaded every hour. So there's there's like no way for them to be able to vet and curate that content effectively enough to prevent lawsuits. And I can assure you, people will be on there scanning videos, hoping they find some dumb shit in a video that they can use to... Uh, to press charges on YouTube or to, to sue them, right? I will. I will. I'm petty like that. And I will, because they took down my content multiple times for no reason other than it didn't follow their agenda, their leftist agenda. So they, they did that to a lot of the conservative creators. And I'm guessing most of them will be out there looking. If they if they do decide to make the dumb decision of acting as a publisher and continuing the, um, the, the system they have now where they allow anyone to just upload anything at any given time, they're just, it's just impossible. So let's get that off the table. They're not going to do that. There's no way they can handle the, the lawsuits. They, there's no way they can handle um, scanning these videos to that degree and making sure that they are squeaky clean. It's not going to happen. There's not enough time to do that with the amount of content being uploaded. So that's not happening. So the other thing is, their other option is absolute free speech. You cannot mess with the content that people upload. And uh, that's the only way I see YouTube being able to move forward. Um, they also, uh, Trump also talks about uh, being able to opt out of curated content, like the homepage you know how you get a bunch of videos that just pop up. Everyone gets their own custom feed. That's technically considered curating the content. And that should cost you, or it should cost you your Section 230 protection. However, Trump made an allowance where if you allow people to opt out of that and just get a raw feed without the curating of the brainwashing content that they want, 
then you're allowed to do that. So I guess you will be able to opt out of that, which is great. All of these things are good for the people. Gives us power. Gives us the ability to to post content without having to feel like uh, YouTube is going to basically destroy our channel because they didn't like what we posted because of uh, some kind of a political allegiances or like a Fed that's working at uh, you know Google trying to take down content that doesn't fit their left leaning narrative. There's a lot of changes coming, guys. So I don't know what you guys think. Um, you know my opinion on it. Go ahead and leave a comment letting me know if you think this is a good thing or a bad thing. 